you. Whoa. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. What a crowd. Well, I want to thank everybody. There has never been spirit. You know, we did great, as you know, in 2016. We did much better in 2020. Bad things happened there. But there's never been spirit like we have for this one. Something's going on that's very special. And I want to say hello, Pennsylvania. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful commonwealth with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. Before we begin, I'd like to send my love and prayers to the families of those who have died, a lot of death, and all of those who are displaced and suffering in the wake of the hurricane's destruction in the South, especially in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and in particular, Western North Carolina took a tremendous hit. It's been absolutely devastated, and God be with you all. It's been a rough, it's been a rough one. That was a big, monster hurricane and uh, was a lot, hit a lot harder than anyone even thought possible. So we want to just extend our best wishes to everybody, right? And Joe Biden is in Delaware sleeping right now in one of his many estates. One of his many estates. How did he get so many houses? He never was anything. He was a politician, made $151. What the hell is it all about? And that's why Lion Kamala Harris in San Francisco, a city that she is totally destroyed, that's where she is right now at a fundraiser. I don't know why fundraiser. They send her, they get so much money. You know, a lot of people send money. I won't tell you who, but people that you would not like very much. I could give you the names. I think I will release the names. But if I do that, they'll say that I'm a threat to democracy. He's a threat. You wouldn't like the names. But they raise a lot of money from bad people. Fundraising events with their radical left lunatic donors. When big parts of our country have been devastated by that massive hurricane and is underwater with many, many people dead. She ought to be here. She ought to be down in the area where she should be. That's what she's getting paid for, right? That's what she's getting paid for. So he's at home sleeping in one of his many estates, and she's in San Francisco, which she destroyed, trying to raise more money. She ought to get out and do more interviews. That's what she ought to do, right? And I'm here in Erie, Pennsylvania, with the workers who used to be Democrats. But now they're all Trump Republicans because they know that Trump is going to take them to the promised land. We will. And we will. And by the way, so that, you know, our polls are doing great. You saw that. This is, if we win Pennsylvania, we win. But, you know, honestly, we're doing good everywhere. But we were at the Alabama-Georgia game yesterday. Did you see it? So. Just to show, because this is a poll too, right? And I walked in. It must be my looks. Because the place went stone cold crazy. Where is it? Put it up. Put it up. We got to put it up. Alabama got off to a, a really big start. You would have said it was over, and then Georgia came back. What a great game that was. Great 
great players, a lot of future NFL players in that group, but it was really great. But the level of love and enthusiasm and, you know, Tim Walsh, you know who he is, right? I won't say which, but he went to a game. They booed him out of the place. They, he wanted to go home early. He wanted to get out of there. That was not good. It was not a good environment. But this is a poll. I mean, that's a poll. It's all a poll. You know, you have thousands of people outside. We were in Wisconsin yesterday, and except for the fact that the administration would not let us have the pit, we had 50,000, maybe more people, and we were going to do an outdoor rally, and we ended up having to do it inside in front of about 1,000 people. But we had 50,000 people that showed up, but they didn't want me to be outside. They said they couldn't get us enough people because they were guarding the United Nations and Iran. The president of Iran is here. But Iran is threatening my life, and they're guarding the president of Iran. And Biden doesn't say anything, I'd say so. If that were me, and I don't care who the opponent was, I'd be letting him know, you better not touch, you better not do anything. But, you know, they're, so they're guarding Iran, and we had 50,000 people. It was the most incredible scene. Wisconsin. I think we're going to do great in Wisconsin. But Rasmussen just came out with a big poll. We're leading. And we have a couple of them where we're leading virtually in every swing state because people are tired of her act. And we're going to say some tough things today. People are tired of her act, her lying. She's a liar. And they're tired of it. I think they would have been better off keeping Sleepy Joe. You want to know the truth? I do. Early voting is beginning and get underway. It's all underway right now in Pennsylvania. And Erie County is starting in the coming days. You know, Erie County was known as a Democrat area until Trump came along. And then they said, what the hell? Right, David? They said, what the hell happened to Erie County? Well, we love you. We're the same people. You, me, we're the same. We need each and every one of you to make a plan to vote early and vote absentee, do whatever you want. The main thing is you got to get out and you got to vote. I really believe that if you look at this date and look at what's happening to our country, I think November 5th will be the most important day potentially in the history of our country because our country is going bad. It's going bad. We have stupid people running it. We also need you to find as many other new voters as you can, so go get them. We have some voters there for us, but they never voted. And uh, they're going to want to vote. Just a little bit prodding, they'll come out and they'll vote. Our entire nation is counting on the people of the Commonwealth. And I know you will not let us down. You're not going to let us down. We're going to have a tremendous vote. We're leading by a lot in Pennsylvania. But I mean, like a thing like fracking. Her whole life, she's, I, you will never frack, never frack. There will be no petroleum product. We're going to go to wind. Everything is going to be wind. Wind. Even if it's not windy, then we'll suffer for a couple of days. Well, about 90% of the year. We're going to wind. We're going to lots of different things. They haven't worked anywhere else in the world, but we're going anywhere. Uh, no, she's, there's no way she fracks her whole life. So she has 15 policies. And over the last year and a half, every single one of them, she changed to the exact opposite. Like taking prisoners and giving them sex change operation. She's totally in favor. That's what she wants to do. That's one of the more... Uh, men playing in women's sports. I, I, who would, who would want that? Who would want that? I, I, frankly, the worst of all, and and to me, the most ridiculous, or almost most ridiculous, open borders. Let everyone come into our country and destroy it. But if we win in Pennsylvania, we will win the whole thing. We're going to win, and we're going to turn our country around. We're going to turn our country around, right?
David. We're going to turn our country around. We're going to turn around fast. Thank you. And vote for that man right there. He's a great man, David McCormick, Senator. Bob Casey. Bob Casey does nothing. He doesn't do. I was there four years. I don't know if I ever met the guys. He just votes along whoever's, you know, on the radical left. He votes. It's not, it's not your guy. And he's been there a long time. His father was there. He was there. You got to get somebody that's got energy. He's a low energy person. Remember the last time I said that? Huh? That family has never spoken to me again. <laughs> 37 days from now, we're going to win this Commonwealth. We're going to defeat Lion Kamala Harris, and we will make America great again. We will do that. And this is the most important election. I think it's going to be the most important election of them all. I mean, they had some pretty good ones, right? Long time ago, they had some pretty good ones, but this is, you know, I thought that 2016 was the most, and I'd say that, this is the most important because the border was bad, and then we fixed it 100%, 100%. It was so good, and then these guys took over and they destroyed it quickly. They got rid of little things like remain in Mexico, you know, things like, not easy to get, remain. When I told the president of Mexico, you know, all, everybody's staying in Mexico. No, no, we wouldn't do that. I said, yes, you will. Because if you don't, we're going to tariff your cars at 150%, and that's going to be the end of that. Sir, we'd love to do that. We'd love to keep everybody in. We had hundreds of thousands of people. Tijuana was probably the fastest growing place on the planet. You ended up with like a half a million people there from a little town where you get a nice little drink to a half a million people, they couldn't get into the country. They wouldn't come in. Mexico was great, but I used tariffs in order to get that, but it was very important. As soon as they came in, they let the people just pour in. It's so, it is so sad, and we're going to discuss that. If Kamala Harris gets four more years, America, as we know it, will absolutely be destroyed. You'll have... You'll have not 21 or 25, whatever it may be. Nobody has any idea. They have no idea. They don't, they have no idea. You know, they like to say 12, 14, 13. It's 21. It's probably, could be 31, could be a lot more than that. They have no idea. They're pouring in. Kamala is openly acknowledged to be the worst vice president in history. And as president, she would be much worse than that. She would be a disaster. I mean, they asked her, did anybody see the Oprah interview? <laughs> Oprah wanted to climb under the table. She, she couldn't. The whole thing is crazy. Two days ago, for the first time ever, the Patriots of ICE released. This is the first time ever where they released murder numbers and rape numbers and human trafficking numbers. They never do that. They talk about overall nice and gently. But somebody felt that these numbers should be released, and they came out actually just as she got to the border. It's very interesting. This was a little tough, because she gets up and she goes, well, I, I didn't really get involved too much with the border, but I'm going to now get involved. Why didn't she do it almost four years ago? Why didn't she do it? Because she can't do it. She can't do it. Number one, she doesn't have the capability. Number two, her base will not let her do it, for whatever reason that is. You have to explain that. But new data came out, and the massive number of savage criminal aliens that Kamala Harris has allowed to invade our country. This is an invasion, and these people are mean, tough. She had a total, listen to this, these numbers just came out, nobody thought. And I've been saying it for a long time because we are the party of common sense. I knew that once they had open borders, all of the countries, I didn't think about all over the world. I thought in South America, it's all over the world. Last week, a lot of people came in from the Congo, a big prison in the Congo in Africa. Welcome to the United States. They came in from the Congo. They come in from South America. They come in from Asia. They come in from all over the world. They come in from all over the world, the Middle East. You got to see from Yemen, they're coming in. We have more terrorists come into our country in the last two and a half years 
than we've ever seen. You know, I had one year where Border Patrol said no terrorists came in. I had another year where they said 11 came in. Thousands of terrorists are pouring into our country now. Thousands. And they're coming into our cities and our small towns here in Pennsylvania and all over the, the country. These towns are, are petrified. Even if they're not there yet, they will be there because you have, you have millions of people we're dealing with. No country, this is not sustainable by any country in total. Listen to these numbers, though. These are the official numbers. These are certified numbers. Can you believe it? This isn't her with her bullshit. In total, she's a liar. In total, during her term, no, it's not even believable. She let in 13,099 convicted murderers. Some of them had murdered 10 people. Some murdered seven. One murdered six. One, I'm looking at these. These are stone-cold killers. And they let in people that are worse than any criminal we have. It's, the only thing nice about it is they make our criminals look extremely soft and nice. <laughs> and remember these people? Remember her and Sleepy Joe saying, no, the people that we bring in, they don't create crime. I'm saying, are they kidding? I'm going to show you a video that I have that you're going to see in a couple of seconds. It's brutal. It's brutal. One guy talking to a judge, I will kill you. These are brutal people. These are, these are the people that we don't want. You know, we all have big hearts and all that stuff. She let in 25,272 illegal aliens convicted of rape and other sex crimes, viciously, viciously raping. And 62,231 criminal aliens convicted of violent assault where people are just about dead, but they didn't die, but we took them in, too. In total, she let in, listen to these numbers, 647,572 migrant criminals of the worst order. They call them of the worst order. I wonder what that means. Charged with or convicted with heinous crimes, including child predators, drug dealers, vicious gang members, sadist thugs, and people that deal in women, people that uh, they take women and they sell women and they bring them across the border, mostly women, children also, but mostly women. And they're all living in our country right now. And we've had many killings. Rachel Moran, so many people have, have died, but wait till you see what's going to happen. Oh, and if I don't get in, it's going to be the worst thing that this country has ever suffered because they won't do a damn thing about it. And the number of 21 or 25 or whatever million it is, you'll have 150, 200 million come in. You will have, this country will no longer be recognizable. It's already close to that. And we're going to get it taken care of. And I, I just say this, I just say this, to all rapists, drug dealers, human traffickers, and murderers, Welcome to America. It is important that you send a thank you note to Lion Kamala Harris, because without her, you would not be here. But we don't want you here, and you're going to get the hell out very soon. We're getting you out. When just one Convicted murderer escapes from prison in real life, right? We have one person will escape who's not nearly as bad as the people we're letting in. He's like, I mean, he's like a perfect person compared to the people we're letting in. You'll see that in a second. But if somebody escapes, we have a massive manhunt, and we look all over the place, and we got everything, and the war. And we have 13,099 that just came in. We have massive manhunts. It's all over the place, and they capture them. But now we have 13,099. That's just the murderers. And over 600,000 
highest, they call them highest level criminals in our country. Kamala let in the 13,099 convicted murders and opposes all efforts to find them and to remove them. She opposes all these efforts because, look, she's a communist, you know that. I, I say, I used to say Marxist, but unfortunately, nobody knows what that is. Most people said, what's a Marxist? Is that a good thing or a bad? I said, I have to use the word communist, okay? Do you mind? Does anybody mind? It's, it's close. And by the way, they're close enough. Remember, I used to say, our country will never be a socialist country. And I turned out to be right. They skipped socialism. They went right down to communism. So I was right. See, because I'm right about everything, right? I, Trump is right about everything. Trump is right about everything. They skip socialism. Normally, they go from socialism to communism. No, they skip socialism. Kamala Harris can never be forgiven for erasing our border. And she must never be allowed to become president of the United States. She'll destroy. She's a radical left lunatic. And one of the reasons I'm angry yesterday, she made a speech like everything on the border is good. And she's going to fix the border. She's, did you see that crazy speech? And I'm going to fix the border because I was a prosecutor. You know who she prosecuted? Mostly her political opponents like me. They said, but how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good, right? She actually had a terrible record as a prosecutor. And you know who she went after more than anybody? African Americans. They hate her. They hate her. And she destroyed, and she destroyed San Francisco. But what she's done is a total disqualifier. She should be disqualified. She should resign the vice presidency and go home to California, which she is by, you know, she's, she's really destroyed it. But she should go home in disgrace. What Kamala has done with illegal migrants is the biggest crime story of our time because hundreds of thousands of people are going to be victims very shortly. It's happening. We had many of them yesterday. We had this incredible event. We had many of the parents of victims at the event. We had one or two that spoke to, that spoke uh, I mean, it was, it's impossible almost for them. Their lives are destroyed, just so you understand. Their daughters were killed. Their lives are destroyed. Their sons are killed. And they were killed by uh, migrants that came in illegally that were so vicious, like you've never seen before. Already hundreds of people have been murdered because of her action at the border, and thousands more will follow in rapid succession. She should be impeached and prosecuted for her actions. And these killers are stone-cold monsters and have so little heart. They have no heart. They really have no heart. Worse than anything you can see on television. You know, you look at the mob pictures, the gangster pictures, the, the drug dealer pictures. These people are far worse. There's nobody in Hollywood like this. You can't get people like this. You'll see that in a second. And they don't care when or who they kill. They wake up the following morning, they don't even remember. So it's just like a routine part of life. And they're in our country now. They don't even think about it. These are rough, vicious, rougher than anything you can imagine. There is no, and I say it all the time, if you want to do a movie on some of these uh, people that you're going to be looking at in two minutes, if you wanted to do a movie, there's no actor in Hollywood that could play the role. There's nobody that could do it. These actors, you know, they're a little bit shaky. They can't play the role. They bring in a big actor, and you look, you say, oh, he's got no muscle content. He's got no muscle. We need a little muscle. <laughs> then they bring in another one. But he's got a weak face. He looks weak. Now, these guys have the whole package, unfortunately, for our country. I watched one of them shouting at a judge, I kill you. I kill you when I get out. I kill you. And, you know, the judge is like, oh, he's never heard this stuff. And even the guards, you know, they want to look for a new job themselves. I kill you. But it's all because Kamala let these people in. Uh, let's take a look at this. You'll find it very interesting. 
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please step out of the hallway. If I can dance, I'm going to fucking ring it. I'm going to break it out soon, and I'll kill more. Central casting, Mr. Wall. Stand up, Mr. Wall. I love this guy's outfit. I got to buy. Are they for sale? I want to buy one. You know, I built hundreds of miles of wall. I'm going to buy one of those and come out here. I built hundreds of miles of wall, and it worked. And I was going to add another 200 miles, and then we had a very disruptive election. Horrible thing happened. Horrible, horrible. Including in this state. We won it in 2016 easily, and then in this state, uh, bad things happen because I love you and you love me. We won by so, we did so good here. But you know what? I built hundreds of miles of wall, and I'm going to walk onto this platform someday at some place, and I'm going to wear that ugly, horrible suit <laughs> because it's emblematic. It's emblematic of what we've done, right? A great guy. He must have been to 250. Do you have any idea how many you've come to? Hundreds, hundreds. And he's a very successful guy. You believe it? It's like, you know, they go to football games and they got the name of guys, a top guy in a law firm or a top CPA. But on Sunday or Saturday, he goes to, goes to football and they have the name of the player in the back, you know, like, I mean, who would do that? But they do that. I wouldn't do that. Just out of pride. I'm not going to do that. We want to keep our own name on our back, right? But uh, he's been a great guy. He's gone, I'll bet he's gone to 250 rallies. You may have the record, right? Do we have the people from the ladies from North Carolina? We have the front row Joes. Where's the front row Joe? Look at this. Look at these guys. Look at these front row Joes. But we have a great time with a horrible subject. Think how it will be when we fix it. We will really have a great time because we're going to fix it and we're going to fix it. But these people are very much like how the Democrats are and the way they cheat in elections. They have absolutely no shame. These criminals are the way the Democrats are. They have no shame whatsoever. They cheat, and it's almost like routine for them. It doesn't bother them at all. Kamala Harris lies about everything, and that's why they call her Lion Kamala. L-Y-I-N apostrophe. Lion. Lion. She's a liar. She lies about everything. She makes up stories about me. But yesterday, really, she said I ripped babies out of a crib. Donald Trump ripped. I ripped babies. I said, where did she get that one? Every day, it's a new story. I now, if I'm a person, you know, that's not really into, like, knowing who Trump is, I would say he's a terrible guy. You know, he rips babies out of a crib. Remember when they blamed me for building cages to put kids in? And then somebody from Border Patrol said, I'm sorry, that was two years before President Trump came into office. That was done by Barack Hussein Obama, right? That was Barack Hussein Obama. Remember that? They let, oh, I was going through, I went through two weeks of hell, and then finally somebody spoke up and said, I said, I never built those things, and then it was Obama that built them. So it took a little time. Did I get an apology from the fake news? Oh, that's a lot of fake news. Did I get an apology from the fake news? No. Did I get an apology from 60 Minutes when I said that the laptop from hell had nothing to do with Russia? It was done by Hunter. Did I get an apology from 60 Minutes? No. Oh. Remember that? She was fighting me. This was from Russia. I said, this was not from Russia. I won't tell you what the pictures were. They were not good. They never got into the real pictures, did they? Huh? 
If it was me, they would have gotten into the real pictures real fast. They didn't get into those pictures. She makes up stories about everything, including herself. Like, you know, it's so nice. I, I, date, I always get criticized because they, they agree that I'm true. But why would I bring it up so much? Because it's so simple. It's not a horrible plot. It's not a complex thing that people get bored with Uncle Sam. It's just basic. She said, she worked so hard, she sweated over french fries at McDonald's, and she never worked there. It turned out to be a lie. And the fake news doesn't want to talk about it, although I heard a major newspaper is doing a big story on it. It's a lie. It's a total lie. She never worked at McDonald's, but she lies about everything, and we can't let her get into office, and that's why I'm a little bit rougher than I would normally be. You know, we started off with crooked Joe Biden, and they kept him in the basement. They got lucky because of the horrible COVID situation. We did an amazing job with COVID. I never got cre I got credit for the economy. I got credit for the military. We took out ISIS. We rebuilt them. I got a lot of credit. Space Force. Never got credit. And what we did was amazing. Nobody knew what it was. What we did was amazing with all of the all of the things that we did were amazing actually but you know when he came in and then he comes along and he stops and all of a sudden you realize and now we got him as a president and the wall stopped and everything stopped and people started coming in oh is my favorite of all time my favorite graph in fact my favorite document of all time and i have some good ones there is never a document like this. Do you have? They don't even know I'm going to be asking for this. This reminds me. Oh, they're unbelievable. No, they didn't even know. That's my favorite document. That document saved my life. Immigration saved my life. Without that document, I would not be here. Without that document, I wouldn't be talking to you. Without that document, we're not here. Because that document's always on my left. It's always on my left. It's always at the end of the speech, not the beginning. And I had it on my right, because I don't use the teleprompter that much, you know, just pieces. By the way, I said this the other day. Isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need to use a teleprompter, isn't it, Uncle Sam? Isn't that nice? Wouldn't, isn't it really nice? But they do keep you out of a lot of trouble. You know, you just read the line. Like, I was watching her the other day. Ba 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 ba. Keeps you out of trouble, because she can't answer a question. So, so this document turned out at the beginning, think of that. What are the chances that it's at the beginning? I never did it at the beginning, right at the beginning, and it's on my right instead of my left. And I was looking just at the right angle. Ping. I love that document. I sleep with that document every night. I kiss that document. I love that document. But what the document says, now that we get back to order, what the document says is that that was the lowest point, we, the arrow in the bottom. That was the lowest point of illegal immigration in the history of our country. It's the lowest point that we've ever had. We had it going good. That included drugs, and that included trafficking of women and trafficking of children. We had it going, and all they had to do is leave it. And they came in, and they terminated everything. Sanctions, they terminated Remain in Mexico. They terminated every single thing. And they ended up with, look what, look what happened. It was like a rocket ship, what's gone on. And then we found out on top of everything, I don't think they knew it at that time, they had flights coming in from all over different parts of the world. Flights, big, beautiful airplanes loaded up with migrants going, flying over the border. So they really did want people to come in. You know, now she says, well, I did a good job, but we're going to do a good job. Why hasn't she done it? You know, my expression with her, the number, you can say every word she utters, why haven't you done it? She goes, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. She's there for almost four years, and I just keep saying why I did it during the debate. I killed her in the debate, but I have a lot of crooked, I have crooked people. What they do, 
I had three on one. I didn't even mind that. I still won by a lot. But why? I asked a question. I asked a question. I asked, and that David Muir, how about him? I said, how about that guy? Pretty boy, you know, we call him pretty boy. That's about it, that's about all. But you know what? I said, crime is at a level like we've never seen. It's rampant, it's rising. Okay, he interrupts me. I'm sorry, sir. Crime in this country has gone down. I said, you know, without looking at numbers, is there anybody in this room that think that crime has gone down, it's gone through the roof? And largely, because of migrant crime. More, I mean, a big, it, it's not only that. You know, in New York, you can't walk into a drugstore now. It's like you're in a prison of glass. If you want to buy aspirin, you have to wait 45 minutes for a clerk to come up and open, because what's gone on, and every drugstore, I just lost one. I had a nice tenant, I just lost a tenant. I had a beautiful tenant at 40 Wall Street. I just lost a tenant. He opened, a, they opened a big chain drugstore. Big, beautiful chain. They opened. They were doing such great business. 40 Wall Street right across from the stock exchange. They gave me notice. They said, we're going to have to close. Because the shelves, they literally, the people walk in, they just take everything they want. They walk out of the store. What the hell is going on? See, we have to let the police do their job. And if they have to be extraordinarily rough. And you know, the funny thing with all of that stuff, look at the department stores, same thing. They walk into a, you see these guys walking out with air conditioners, with refrigerators on their back, the craziest thing. And the police aren't allowed to do their job. They're told, if you do anything, you're gonna lose your pension, you're gonna lose your family, your house, your car. The police wanna do it, the Border Patrol wants to do it. Border Patrol, they're incredible. They wanna do it. They're not allowed to do it because the liberal left won't let them do it. The liberal left wants to destroy them and they wanna destroy our country. You know, if you had one day, like one real rough, nasty day with the drugstores as an example, where when they start walking out with, you know, she created something in San Francisco, $950 you're allowed to steal. Anything above that, you will be prosecuted. Well, it works out that the 950 is a misnomer because you can steal whatever you want, you can go way above. But you'd see, originally, you saw kids walk in with calculators. <laughs> they were calculating. They didn't want to go over the $950. They're standing with calculators, adding it up. You know, these are smart, smart people. They're not so stupid, but they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day, like a guy like, Mike Kelly put him in charge. Congressman Kelly put him in charge for one day. Mike, would you say, he's right here. He's a great congressman. Would you say, Mike, that if you were in charge, you would say, oh, please, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Let them rob your store. Let All these stores go out of business, right? They don't pay rent. The, the city doesn't have money. The whole, it's a chain of events that's so bad. One rough hour. And I mean real rough. The word will get out, and it will end immediately. End immediately. You know? It'll end immediately. Crooked Joe Biden became mentally impaired, sad. But lying Kamala Harris, honestly, I believe she was born that way. <laughs> There's something wrong with Kamala. And I just don't know what it is, but there is definitely something missing. And you know what? Everybody knows it. security, especially at our border. Who really is Kamala Harris? She's been telling us her entire career. I support our sanctuary law. The illegal immigrant deported multiple times who stands accused of killing Kate Steinle. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. Also, I urge to reject that term illegal alien. Are you 
aware that there's a perception? I see no. Are you that, aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? Abolish ICE. Yeah. Is that a position that you agree with? And we need to probably think about starting from scratch. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. I am opposed to any policy that would deny any human being public health, period. Would you be committing to close immigration detention centers? Absolutely, on day one. How can she have applied consequences last three and a half years? Ten men are legal encounters. Two men got out of ways. 600% increase in sex trafficking. More terrorists come across the border. A record number of people off the terrorist watch list. And over a quarter of a million Americans dead to fentanyl that comes across the border. Consequences, there ought to be consequences for her failure. We have a secure border. The border is secure. Sickening new details about the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The 22-year-old was beaten to death with a mystery object. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I, mean, I don't... Kamala Harris, do you trust her to stop the invasion? <laughs> Thank you very much. And honestly, we could give you clips like that all day long. This is not your president. This president would destroy our country worse than Biden. He's the worst president in history. She would be worse. Every day, Kamala is using migrant flights and her phone app. Think of this. They're using a phone app where the migrants are allowed to Phone them in so they find out how, but it's really, you know who really uses it? The cartels use it. The cartels use it because they pay off everybody. Our crooked people, they pay them off. They have a phone app. Where's the best place to drop the people? But they want to flood up Pennsylvania in particular, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the entire Midwest with thousands of migrants from the most dangerous countries on Earth destroying the character of small towns and leaving local communities in anguish and in despair. Pennsylvania is not going to take it anymore. I don't think you're going to take it anymore. I don't think so. As just an example, the beautiful 4,000-person town of Charleroi. Do you know Charleroi, Pennsylvania? Yes. Beautiful. It was. It was beautiful. <laughs> Lots of luck, Charleroi. I love you very much. But you get in, Charleroi will be beautiful again. But right now, it's not so good. It's seen a 2,000% increase in the population of illegal immigrants under the borders of Harris. So it's population. It's population. This is a little town. No crime, no problem. Nice place to live. No problems. It just had a 2,000% percent, 2,000 percent increase in population with people just like we're showing you today. Our country is being turned into a dumping ground for the world. We have no choice. The people that Kamala Harris has illegally imported have to go back to places from which they came. They have to go back. They have to go back. In August, an illegal alien who Kamala Harris released into our country despite the fact that he was a convicted murderer and sex offender. Other than that, he was quite a nice gentleman. He was from El Salvador, killed a West Virginia mother of two. Killed her. Viciously killed her. Didn't even think it was a, bi a bad thing. He didn't even think it was that bad. Only days ago, right here in Pennsylvania, an illegal alien ran over a 23-year-old musician with his car and did it on purpose. And in New York, an illegal alien brutally murdered a woman in front of her children and enjoyed doing it. If Kamala Harris wins this election, she will overwhelm Pennsylvania cities and towns with illegal immigrants and migrants. And Pennsylvania will never, ever be the same. I went to... I went to school here. I love this place. I know it. It's so different what's happening to, to your beautiful place. No, I went to school here. 
And uh, I loved it. I always loved it. But it, what's happening, what's happening is so different. Kamala is so radical, she even wants to legalize fentanyl. She wants fentanyl to come in. When one little drop, one little drop can destroy you, which is pouring, it's pouring across our borders at record levels, at levels that you've never seen before. Fentanyl, how, how many people? I mean, everybody I know, they have family members that are dying, mostly children. And many of them not even looking for drugs. They have something else where it's something that they're, and it's laced with fentanyl, and they end up dying a, a vicious death, by the way. Um, you know, I brought something, the snake. Does anybody want to hear it? We don't have to do it if you want to get back. Should we do the snake or not? Should we, David, do it? We got to get that guy in office. Should we do it? Well, it's so, it's so apropos, right? Do, should we do it? 250, anyone see it, the snake, but it's, it's true. It's just so bad. But it is apropos, isn't it? So for those of you, who has not heard the snake? Who has heard the snake? And they don't care, they want to hear it again. Let's do it. This is about the border, essentially. It was an old song and a little rewording and things, but it was uh, very, very apropos and I think, uh, I think very good in a lot of ways. Got to learn your lesson. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake his pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. Take me in, oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She touched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. That's what's happening on our border. That's what's happening on our border. I mean, we can get a PhD in whatever it is from the best school in the world. It's not going to be more accurate than that. When you look at that guy up there talking to the judge, I kill you, I kill you, I kill you. Oh, he wanted to kill him. He will. He, if he gets out, he'll kill him 100%. Uh, but you have to know. But this is what we're bringing into our beautiful country, our beautiful USA. This is what we're bringing. It's, uh, but we're bringing them in at levels that nobody's ever seen, and we're doing it by stupid people like Kamala. She's a stupid person. Stupid person. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> On day one of my new administration, the invasion ends and the deportations begin. We get them out.
Thank you very much. As soon as I take office, I will stop all migrant flights to Pennsylvania and every other state. I will shut down all entries through Kamala's migrant phone app, if you can believe. They have an app. They have a phone app. I called it that. Can you believe this? I will end immediately catch and release. So I had catch and release, too. But you know where I released them? In Mexico. I have catch and release, too, but I released them in Mexico. Their catch and release was to catch them. Even if they were a criminal, immediately they released them into our country. I released them into Mexico. I will end all sanctuary cities all over our country immediately. And I will restore Remain in Mexico. It's called Remain in Mexico, and it wasn't easy to get. I had a fight like hell with the Mexican government and the president, a good man, but I had a fight like hell. When I told him, I want everybody to stay in Mexico, he laughed at me. He laughed. He said, what? Why would we do that? Why? I said, you're going to do it. No, no, you're going to do it. No, but we can't do that. I said, you're going to do it. And if you don't do it, we're putting this massive tariff on everything you sell into our country, including all the cars you stole. And we'll make an absolute fortune on you, all right? And, I, and he said, uh, but Donald, uh, it would be my great honor to do everything that you'd like to do. Please don't put those tariffs on me, please. I beg you, don't put the tariffs. I will send in the federal law enforcement to liberate every Pennsylvania town and every town in the United States of America that has been taken over by migrant gangs and thugs and criminal aliens. Another front in Kamala's war on Pennsylvania's way of life is her war on energy. She was always against fossil fuels. She was born that way. You don't change. You know, she just changed because her poll numbers were bad. You don't change. I'm the only guy this happens to. So I have the debate. Biden goes way down. He's down 21 points, I think. I'm, I'm leading by 21 points. The election's over. Crazy Nancy Pelosi. She's crazy as a bed bug. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, Visa, right? Did you see? Visa. She owned a lot of Visa. And the Justice Department brought suit against Visa, a vicious, big, a terrible suit. And she sold all of her stock the day before the suit was brought. She owned it for years. She's crooked. And she also knew, you know, we offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she knew that. And she actually admitted it on her daughter's documentary. She's a documentarian. I don't think Nancy's too happy about that. She said it was her fault. It was her total responsibility. I couldn't believe the daughter released the tapes, but they weren't really released. They were gotten somehow. Somebody gave them. And she took total responsibility, J6. Nancy Pelosi said she, she turned down thousands of troops. National Guard. Now, you didn't need thousands. You didn't need 10,000. I over 10,000 or more because I felt it was going to be a very big day. Everybody was talking about it. But she turned them down. If she would have had 200, 300, 400, uh, January 6th would not have existed as we knew it. Now, think of it. And she's right on tape. This is my fault. This is my responsibility. I can't believe this has happened. And then they try and blame me for it. I offered them 10,000 troops, whatever you need, a few days before, because I said, there's going to be a lot of people here. If Kamala is reelected, her Green News scam will obliterate the economy of your commonwealth. Obliterate it. All stupid stuff. It also caused a lot of inflation between the energy policies and everything else they did. But the, the cre crazy spending, Green News scam, it used to be called the Green New Deal. Now we call it, do you ever notice this was such a big deal, the environmental stuff. I haven't heard the environmental stuff mentioned in six months. I was saying the other night, what the hell happened to the environment? David, will you figure this out? David McCormick, everybody vote for him. David, will you figure this out? You know? 
No, but think about this. I haven't heard, Mike, I haven't heard, they don't ever talk about the environment anymore. You know why? Mike is saying, don't talk about it now. No, it's one of the great scams of all time. You know why they don't talk about it? Because people aren't buying it anymore. It's, I don't want to use bad language. My wife said, please don't use bad language. You know who said that? Right. The great son of the legendary Billy Graham, Franklin Graham. He said, sir, you are one of the greatest storytellers I've ever heard. But I listened to your rally the other night. You wrote me a beautiful letter, and your stories would even be better if you didn't use foul language. <laughs> and, and I respect Franklin. I love Franklin. Franklin's a great guy. He really, really does a good job. And, you know, I took that letter. I said, gee. And then I said, okay, I won't. really bad words, but like, you know, for emphasis, and so I tried it one time, and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> Instead of that word, I said, and it's not true. <laughs> and people are looking like, you know, falling asleep. Oh. But when I win, we will get Pennsylvania energy workers fracking, drilling, pumping, and producing like they have never produced before. <laughs> Kamala vowed to repeatedly ban fracking, and she imposed a natural gas export ban. That was a killer. That is starving your state right now of your wealth and wealth that you deserve. Right now, she imposed a ban on the natural gas. Very bad. People don't even talk about it. Her insane electric vehicle mandate. This is where everybody's going to have an electric car within a very short period of time. But maybe not everybody wants an electric car. And we love Elon. I love Elon. He endorsed me, gave me the strongest endorsement. And his Tesla is great. But he understands this. And he never wants, you know, somebody said, does Elon ever speak to you about the electric? I said, never spoke to him about it. He never called me and said, what the hell are you doing here? Because he understands. He's got a great market. It might be 7 or 8%. But they're trying to have everyone 100%. Number one, they're made in China. For the most part, they will all be made. The, the auto workers are now, you saw the Teamsters overwhelmingly supported me. You saw that. And the auto workers are overwhelmingly supporting me. It's pretty amazing. But the insane electric vehicle mandate, they want everybody to have an electric car, but they don't go far. They cost much more. There are a lot of problems, and they don't work well. You know, in Iowa, it was 20 degrees below zero, and I always heard the cars don't work well in the cold. And I had a big night in Iowa. I won that, I won that whole primary thing. That we won by numbers that nobody's ever seen before. So I remember it very vividly, and I'm driving there, and there are cars all over the road. I said, what the hell is going on? Sir, there are electric cars, and they don't work in cold weather. I said, oh, that sounds like a bad idea. No, there are a lot of problems, but there are a lot of, you know, some people want them. They're great. Other people don't. But you have to have your choice. If you want a gasoline-propelled car, if you want to have a hybrid, you should have it. You should be able to have it. The new thing is hydrogen. They have hydrogen cars. They have one problem. On occasion, it will blow up. And when it blows up, you are not recognizable. No, you're not even recognizable. This is like a massive bomb being dropped. When it blows up, you are no longer, your wife cannot identify you. Let me put it that way. Is this your husband? They show you blood. Is this your husband? I really can't, I really can't tell. No, so that's a problem they're going to have to work out, I think. But uh, they say that's the new up and coming thing. So far, I'm not interested. Her insane electric vehicle mandate will decimate Pennsylvania's economy by abolishing gas-powered cars and trucks for American roads and destroying your fossil fuel industry. And there's very few states that benefit like you do from fracking. I mean, it's uh, you have 500,000 jobs. And if she gets it, she's going to just dead it. She's, she just, she's a liar. 
Remember, again, McDonald's, just put it in your mind. It's so simple. I don't have to go through a long story. She said she worked there. She said she's a liar. That's why we're calling her L-Y-I-N apostrophe. And thanks to her Green News scam, your electricity prices are up in Pennsylvania 62% since she took office and are slated to be increased this year by more than 30%. Congratulations. You know, if and when we win, I, you know, everyone says, sir, sir, say, if they didn't cheat, I wouldn't even be here today. You know why? I wouldn't have to campaign. I'm here only because they cheat. And they cheat in this state, especially in Philadelphia. And I mentioned a couple of the areas, but for the most part, but Philadelphia is out of control. Detroit is out of control. Atlanta is out of control. Places are out of control, out of control. Because if there was no cheating, if God came down from a high and said, I am going to be your vote tabulator for this election, I would leave this podium right now because I wouldn't have to speak. We wouldn't have any problem. We have to have a landslide because they cheat so damn much. We have to have a landslide. Right, Mike? So I never say when I win. We're leading in all the polls. We're leading the state. But I say if and when, because I don't want to be, I don't want to be obnoxious and I don't want to be foolish either. But if and when, we're leading big. I win. I will cut. Too big to rig. You're right. We want to make it too big to rig. But here's a big promise to Pennsylvania and to the whole country, by the way, because your prices are really high. I mean, for people with all of that power, all of that liquid gold under your feet, you're getting screwed. You're paying high. You're paying one of the highest uh, energy rates, including cars, air conditioners, heating. You're paying one of the highest in the whole country. Perhaps your governor's not doing a very good job. I don't know what the hell's going on. But when... When you, have, when you have that kind of energy, you shouldn't be uh, paying the price, but you're one of the highest. But here's a promise I'm making to you. I will cut your energy and electricity prices in half, 50%, 5-0, within 12 months of taking the oath of office. Within 12 months, within 12 months of taking the oath of office, I will cut your energy prices by 50%, and it's not going to be hard and I will terminate the natural gas export ban. Can you imagine we have a ban? We have countries that want to pay us. You know, we were energy independent four years ago. Now we're not. But more importantly, we were going to be energy dominant. I would have been producing today three to four times what I was doing four years ago. I will repeal the insane electric vehicle mandate, and we will drill, baby, drill. Those two things very early. Drill, baby, drill. Thank you. And earlier this month, I was honored to receive the endorsement, as I said just a little while ago. But I got the endorsement from the rank-and-file membership of the Teamsters. It was a great honor. You know, I've used it in New York. It's a very union town, and I used the Teamsters for years. They were great. They uh, drove the cement trucks where I poured the concrete frames, and I did it for many years. A lot of buildings, built many buildings, many, many buildings, and uh, Teamsters. And I got along with them great, but I got 60% of the vote. Actually, I think more than that, but 60% of the vote. And uh, some local chapters, we did even better in Pennsylvania. We got 65% of the vote from the Teamsters. Wow, thank you very much. I love the Teamsters. Are there any Teamsters? Any Teamsters in the room? Good. I stand up, sir. He's a tough-looking guy. Very good. Good. Thank you. And as a result of this, you know, shocking, to me it's not shocking, but as a result, the national organization, as you know, uh, has refused to endorse the Democrat candidate for president for the first time in decades. I mean, it's been a long time. And I want to thank Teamsters President Sean O'Brien and 
All of the incredible rank and file teamsters that did this, this was a big shocker for, it wasn't shocking to me. I said, how the hell are teamsters? You know, these are tough people. How the hell are they gonna vote for this woman, this, this terrible person? She's weak in so many ways, like, you know, she's weak. <laughs> They're not gonna vote for that. I said a long time ago, I don't believe, I actually believe they would have been better if they left crooked Joe Biden in, because I actually think at least he had a base. She has no base. You know, she was the last person, she came in last, because when he ran, he got 14 million votes, whatever you want. I'm not a big fan of his. I wouldn't say he's exactly the greatest, do we agree? Not exactly the greatest. He doesn't have any idea where the hell he is, but I think he's better than she is. And he had a base, you know, he had a little base because of years and years, he made up a lot of it. You know, he said he lived here, he lived there. He, was a f he said, I used to fly jets too. If pilots came in, I used to fly jets. If truckers came in, I used to drive a truck. <laughs> the worst of all though was when he said, I want to play him in golf. He wants to play me in golf. You ever see him play? Yeah. And Trump. Mm. Oh, but I'm a good golfer. No, I'm a good golfer. He said, I want to play him in golf. I'll give him three strokes a side. I said, can you believe this? The guy can't play. He never could. By the way, 30, 40 years ago, he couldn't play either. <laughs> I was also honored to receive the endorsement of the Fraternal Order of Police, representing almost 400,000 police officers. <laughs> Biggest organization all across our country. And also, I got almost every single police Maybe I maybe got them all, but I want to say almost because the fake news is back there, so I have to be careful. If I say I got them all and there's like one little group in some place, no, but I got almost every single group of police officers and, and law enforcement generally, sheriffs, everybody. These are great people, and we got to let them do their job. Also central to Kamala's agenda for economic destruction is her plan to impose the largest individual tax hikes in American history on you, the largest small business tax hike. She wants to get rid of the estate tax provision that I have in my tax, where if you die and you love your children, you can leave your small farm or small business to your kids. If you don't love your children, it doesn't matter. Does anybody here not love their children? Okay, then, then I've covered 100% of the audience. Well, there are some, but they're, they're sort of embarrassed. They don't want to raise their head. But also, it's the, uh, wants to impose the largest capital gains tax in history, and even a brand new wealth confiscation tax, or as they call it, unrealized capital gain, where you have to pay a capital gain even if you keep your business or keep whatever it is that you want to keep. You have to go out, get it appraised. And then you have to, after you get it appraised, you have to negotiate. This is the craziest thing. That's called the communist tax. That's basically a confiscation. I mean, some people in this room, you're wealthy, but you don't have a lot of cash, and you're no longer wealthy with this one. This one is whack job. But that's, I don't know if it's ever been used. I mean, I've heard about it for years, but uh, it's called unrealized capital gains. It means exactly what it says. It's, they're unrealized. So you can't tax them, which will annihilate the stock market and wipe out the savings of millions and millions of seniors and retirees and middle class families will be devastated. Kamala Harris is a tax queen. She's known as the tax queen. She loves taxing people. This is the only election I've ever seen where somebody brags about we're going to raise your taxes. You know, I've grown up watching politics. I've always liked politics. I've been on the other side, like writing contribution checks. but. I've watched and I've never heard anything like, you know, most uh, politicians, we will cut your taxes. This is constantly, even if they don't do it, by the way, a lot of times they don't. We will cut your tax. It is our goal to cut your taxes. We're gonna cut, right, Mike? Every politician, have you ever seen one that doesn't do that? Look at, I have all these great people here, great congressmen, great congressmen, warriors, David, David, are you going to ever say, we will raise your taxes? No, I don't think so. No, I've never seen it. This is the only group. We are going to raise your taxes. 
We're going to give you capital gains confiscation. We're going to do things that nobody has ever had to do. Vote for Kamala. Who the hell is going to vote? Open borders, tax increases, regulations at a level that no business will be able to hire you. Kamala is coming for your money. She's coming for your pension. She's coming for your savings. And unless you defeat her in November, this country is going to go to hell. As president, I will keep Kamala's greedy hands out of your pockets, and I will deliver gigantic tax cuts for working families of Pennsylvania. Thank you. And very importantly, this is so important because this is something, and she tried to copy me, that one didn't work out, that she tried a few Months later, she said it, she got, she got slaughtered. We will have no tax on tips. No tax on overtime. And no tax on Social Security benefits for seniors. No tax. No tax. And, you know, it's going to lead to great things. A lot of people don't give. I know a lot about overtime. I'd hated to give overtime. I hated it. I'd get other people. I shouldn't say this, but I'd get other people in. I wouldn't pay. I hated. This is going to lead to a lot more. I think it's going to be economically positive, but I'm not even doing it for that reason. I'm doing it because, like, like the you no know, tax on overtime, it's something so good. But no tax for the seniors. Do we have any seniors here? I hate to admit it. I'm a senior. They'll say, he's got a conflict of interest. He's giving this to himself. Watch. I'll end up in front of a grand jury tomorrow. Donald Trump has suggested no tax on Social Security benefits. And he's got a conflict of interest. We're putting him before a grand jury, because I've seen more grand juries than Alphonse Capone. And he averaged about killing one person a week. Alphonse, the meanest of them all. I know more about grand juries than Alphonse ever even thought about. My father's looking down on my mother. They're great people. They say, can you believe my son did this? Can you believe that my son would run for politics and be treated this way? But you know what? And we're doing great. We won the big case in Florida. We're winning them all. I'll tell you what. Did you see? We won the big case. That was the big one. They're going to get him in Florida. They're going to get him in Florida. It was always... That seemed to be the documents case. I had every right to have them, called the Presidential Records Act. That's what they passed it for. But he didn't have that act because he wasn't president. And he got out. You know how he got out? And I don't want to talk about him too much because she's running. Maybe he'll go back. If she does really badly, they'll probably put him back. Let's rechange. But think of this. So they, they got him out. They said, he's guilty for what he did, but he's grossly incompetent which she never told us, by the way. That's putting our country at risk. She should have told us. But he's incompetent, so no, nobody like this should be able to go to court. So think of it. He can't go to court, but he can run the United States of America. There's something wrong with that, right? There's something wrong with that. But the big case was a documents case in Florida. And we had a brilliant judge who was somebody that understood this whole thing. and. I won the case in its entirety, and they go like, that was the big one. The big one was that, we're going to get him in Florida. We're going to get that documents case. No, no, these are very crooked people. These people have weaponized the justice system, and we're not going to let it happen. We're going to, we're not going to let it happen. It's a shame, but that's what it's been. <laughs> Just makes your job more difficult. But it's all what we fight and the resolve that we have, it's the big reason why we're leading in Pennsylvania. And the Emerson poll just came out. I just heard two seconds ago, actually, we're up in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and they're the only ones they did. Even the New York Times, they're not big fans of mine. I'm not big fans of them, the failing New York Times. The Siena poll, we're up in North Carolina by a lot. And we're up in Georgia by four, and we're up in Arizona by five. That's in the New York Times. If they say that, David, that means we're up by... I, he goes, Uncle Sam said triple. 
I think you're right. Uncle Sam, please stand up. Look at this guy. Thank you. And by the way, he doesn't work for me. He goes to a lot of, a lot of these, you know, they say it's the greatest show on earth. It is pretty great, isn't it, though? Isn't it the people? The people make it great. It's the greatest show on earth, but he does, Uncle Sam, I don't know who he is, I, but I shook his hand the other day, at, like at the Nassau Coliseum when we had a big one, but I shook his hand. He's got the strongest hands. He almost broke. I couldn't believe it. I said, Uncle Sam has strong hands. David, I was complaining the whole night. I said, I'm never shaking that guy's hand again. You, have you known that? You have strong hands. He said, thank you, sir, very much. And I, I felt that cracking feeling, right? No, you're a strong guy, right? Strong hands. What did you do for a living? I want to go to your inauguration. Okay. That's a roofer. Good. I can see it. Good. I'll bet you're a good one, too. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. You know, when she gets a, a little crowd, she doesn't get a crowd, but when she gets a little crowd, they have buses coming in. So we take pictures of the buses, we give them to the fake news, they never report it, you know? But they have the bus people, and then they only show the first three or four rows. But we don't, like Uncle Sam, I mean, he, I don't pay anybody to come. We don't do any of that stuff. We have the most incredible group of people all over the country. You know, I mean, if you were up in Wisconsin, if you were up in Wisconsin, you would have seen something that actually was incredible. But we're winning in Pennsylvania, and the main thing that we have to do is we have to get out the vote. We have to get out the vote, because if we lose this election, we are going to have a problem with this country, the likes of which I think no country has ever faced before. Here in Pennsylvania, you also need to vote for your next senator, and he's a great guy. I've known him for a long time. He's a winner in the military. He's a winner in life. He's got a fantastic wife and family. And I'm telling you, he's a warrior. He was a warrior in the military. He then goes into private practice, and he made a lot of money. He ran one of the, big, the biggest firms and did really great, respected so much beyond this, and he just wanted to do something. I would say for the country and for Pennsylvania, because, you know, Pennsylvania to the country, but he loves this country, he loves the Commonwealth. And uh, Dave McCormick, just come up for a second, would you, Dave? Come on up. All right, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, hello, Erie. How are you? You know, I just wanted to say, Mr. President, thank you for coming back to the Keystone State. This is the place where we're going to retire Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and send you back to the White House, right here in Pennsylvania, right here, this state, right here in Erie. Erie, the bellwether, right here. And this is also where we're going to have the chance to fire a guy named Bob Casey. Bob Casey is weak. He's weak. He's a career politician. He's liberal. And we got to send him pack in and bring a Republican majority to the Senate to get the Trump agenda across the finish line. And you know, I don't... I'm a new to politics, but ever since I can remember, I've had people tell me, this is the most important election of your lifetime. How many times have we heard it? I want to tell you, my friends, this for our kids, for our grandkids, this is the most important election of our lifetimes right here. And it's a race. It's a race between strength a guy who says, fight, 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 and weakness, the weakness of Kamala Harris. It's a, it's a race between common sense policies and a radical liberal agenda. We don't, you don't have to listen to me. This is a woman who said in her own words, we want to ban fracking. We want to transition energy workers. We want to give amnesty to 10 million illegal immigrants. We want to make sure they have federal benefits. 
We want to have mandatory buybacks of your guns. We want to defund the police. And how about this? We want to reduce your red meat consumption, right? We need common sense leadership. It's common sense. We need a leader who's going to open up our energy sector, that pure, beautiful natural gas from Pennsylvania right here, President Trump. We need leadership to tame. We got to tame this inflation and help working families with President Trump. We need to bring law and order to our cities, and we need to secure that border and stop these illegal immigrants coming in and bringing crime and fentanyl into Pennsylvania. And most important, our adversaries around the world are testing us. They're challenging us every day. We need peace through strength that we only will get if we get President Trump back in the White House and a majority in the Senate. So I want to tell you all, this is the most important election of your lifetime, but it depends on you. You got to get out there. You got to tell your friends. You got to get them to vote. This is the most important election of your lifetime. Let's go do it. Thank you. That's great, David. So get out. Dave McCormick, great guy. You got to get him in. He'll be a tremendous asset, tremendous help to you and to everybody. We're also uh, pleased to be joined by a couple of real warriors. Mike Kelly, who I mentioned before. Mike, please stand up. Congressman. This guy is hes a great guy. He's been my friend for a long time. I won't say how long, because it was I don't want to think, uh, have them think we're a little old, because we're not old. Where it counts, we're not old. But I'll tell you, Mike is a, a tremendous guy, and he's been that for a long time, and he loves your commonwealth, and he loves it a lot, and he loves our country. So thank you, Mike, for being here. Appreciate it. And another longtime friend, uh, Nick Langworthy, who is a congressman, doing really well. I've known him for, a, he was the leader of the party. He was a leader of everything he's done. And you're doing a great job. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. And a very popular mayor of Slippery Rock, J.D. Alongo. Thank you, J.D. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. And all the other people, we have so many people here. We won't do all, but, and I apologize, but. We got to get back to it, and then we'll get the hell out of here. You go home, watch a football game or something, right? <laughs> Lion Kamala Harris is the worst vice president acknowledged to be in history. Everyone thought she wouldn't get it, but they wanted to be politically correct, so she gave it to her. And here are the facts. She wants open borders. She cost the typical family $29,000. Think of that because of her inflation policy. And, it's going to cost a lot more than that very soon. It's going up by a lot. She was an original creator of Defund the Police. Are there any police officers? She was for Defund the Police. Anybody that wants to defund the police for even one week is not worthy of being the President of the United States. And you know, just to show you, go ahead, put up that video, please. Kamala Harris's radical ideas keep ending in tragedy. Harris raised money to fund the release of violent criminals like Sean Michael Tillman. The Minnesota bail fund promoted by Kamala Harris but recently helped secure the release of a repeat felon who just got charged with murder. Sean Michael Tillman shot and killed a passenger on a train platform after reportedly being released from jail three weeks prior. Harris's liberal ideas get people killed. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. So we're trying to show you, and we're working hard because a lot of people don't know her. She's a disaster. You can't have her. Kamala Harris vowed to abolish ICE and 
She supports free health care for illegal aliens. She wants mass amnesty and citizenship for everyone. All of these people, even if they're criminals, they're looking for amnesty and they want to become citizens of our country. Those countries throw them all out. She says we must not utter the words illegal alien, radical Islamic terrorists. Remember, I used to use that word all the time because we had a problem. We didn't have one terror attack during my four years because they knew they couldn't do it. But maybe worst of all, she lost more than this is not even possible to believe. 325,000 migrant children are missing, many of whom have been trafficked and raped. As California Attorney General, she lost them all. And she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. No, this is, this is a radical left lunatic we're dealing with. By the way, if she wins, it's not going to be so pleasant for me, but I don't care. I really don't care. We have a job to do. You can't let her win. You can't, because they're unpleasant. They're unpleasant anyway. They're crooked. They're crooked people. They're crooked people. She praised the idea of a 70 to 80 percent tax rate. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, they have the best seat in the house, actually. They only see the back, but the cameras, all those cameras are on them. And every once in a while, a star emerges. Like, how about the stars that emerged in Butler? Those people behind me, so many stars emerged. They were behind me, and they were, they didn't run. They weren't running, right? Mike is doing a fantastic job, by the way, on that. Thank you. Mike Kelly, what a fantastic job he's doing. He gets it. But you know, amazing, they had just for a second, so they have these crowd control experts, and they were explaining. When one bullet is fired, big stadiums will run out there. They call it a stampede, and many people oftentimes are killed. Many bullets were fired. They were going over my head. They were going, we lost Corey, the great firefighter, one great guy. And two other people were supposed to die, but the doctors up there were phenomenal, and they saved their lives. We worked with them. But, I mean, what happened was incredible. But the guy comes in, he says, I've never seen anything like this. All those bullets were flying, and you didn't see the crowd out here. It was massive. It was as big a crowd as you'll ever see. I think as big a crowd as you'll ever see. And by the way, we're going back to Butler. You're going to be there. We're going back. That's a big deal. We have a lot of people coming, and I, I really believe that will be the safest place on Earth. And also, I think I'll start the speech by saying, as I was saying, <laughs> but the crowd control expert said, I've never seen, because they studied, they couldn't see the people here because the camera was here, and we had many cameras, and it was, you know, I mean, it was amazing. It was, the whole thing was horrible. But they had the people in the back. Nobody ran. Not one. You probably had like 150 people back there. The big crowd was here, but those people were like locked on television because that's the way the cameras are facing. I mean, the one guy behind me, right? Did you see him? He's up. He was looking to fight. His name is Tom. His name is Tom. And I got to meet him. But he was, he was a brave guy. And, and is he here? brave. That's not the one I was talking about, by the way. It's not the one I was, but he was a brave guy, too. But everybody up there, they were amazing. I mean, they were amazing. So uh, they did. They had my back. They saw that we were in trouble. Something bad happened. And normally, everybody would flee. Nobody, not one male, female, nobody. They just 
what the, you could see the anger on their face. They didn't know exactly. They just knew that your president was in big trouble because they saw that happening, and they didn't flee. And they they didn't. And can I tell you, these people didn't flee either. They were so many people, t tens of thousands of people. They didn't flee. They stood, they watched, and they wanted to know what could they do to help. The people in the front row, front row Joes were there. Some of the front row Joes were there. You were there. And uh, it was amazing. You stood. I watched you. You didn't move. Mr. Wall, I call him Mr. Wall because you can't go wrong. But Mr. Wall stood there. He didn't move an inch. He was like a piece of, like, and bullets are flying all over the place. And it was an amazing thing to see, frankly. I, it, it was real bravery. Rarely, he, the, the crowd control person, a real pro, he said he's never seen anything like it. The people, and what they did, a lot of them, were just, they want the one guy, he just wants to find out. The bullets are going back and forth, a lot of shots. And uh, it was amazing. So we're going to go back to Butler next week, right? Next week. Okay. Good. Going to be a lot of people, and I want to thank the town. They were great. They want to, they want to do it. You know, it's become a big tourist site. Can you believe this? It's become a tremendous. Cars are riding by there, taking pictures. It's become an amazing tourist site. So, but we're going to be back there, and it's going to be. Uh, we're going to have. We're going to celebrate Corey, the firefighter who died, and and really the two men that were so badly hurt, and they're better. Those doctors were amazing. The doctors actually saved the two guys. They're great guys, big, big Trumpers. And Corey was a big Trumper. He just wanted to make America great again. But the two gentlemen, I said, how many people are going to, because it was wall-to-wall -wall people. So when you hear the bullets, you know, they, they're not landing on the ground. There was no ground to land on. There was only people. And they said, three are probably dead, sir. And two of them were very badly hurt. They were brought to the hospital. And these doctors were unbelievable, what the job they did. And uh, so we appreciate the doctors, and we'll celebrate all three. And Corey, in particular, we're going to celebrate. The other two are making a lot of progress. They're going to be in good shape very shortly. So, right. And by the way, I want to thank, while he's here, Mike Kelly, has, uh, you're the head of the commission. And uh, nobody's going to fool him. There's not going to be any fooling around, right, Mike? But Mike Kelly is the head of the commission, and uh, he's the perfect guy to have. And you've been doing a very, I've been watching, it's been amazing what's happening. And very bipartisan. Even the Democrats are agreeing you can't let things like this happen. And, you know, Joe Biden ought to get up and say, you are threatening a candidate, a former president, and a candidate. And if you do anything to him, it's okay. Look, me, it's a very dangerous business. But Biden ought to say, you do anything to him, we're going to blow you off the face of the earth, and then we're not going to have any problems. Right? But he can't say that. Other presidents would say that. He just can't probably get the words out. But. I'll tell you what, if it were reversed, if I were president and somebody was threatening a president, even if I didn't like that person and he was from the opposite party, I would tell the threatening country, you do anything to him, we're going to blow you off the face of the earth. And nothing's going to happen. But we haven't had that happen, have we, Mike? We haven't had that happen, so it makes life a little bit more dangerous, but that's okay. We know what we got into. Kamala pledged to abolish private health care and force everyone onto socialist government-run health care with high taxes and deadly wait times. We've got to wait six, seven months sometime. And she even endorsed free sex changes for illegal aliens in detention at taxpayer expense. That's why five weeks from now, we are going to tell her Kamala, you've done a horrible job as vice president. You are the worst border czar in the history of the world, not just our country. We have to make a change. Kamala, you are horrible. Kamala, you're fired. You're fired. Get out of here. Get out of here, Kamala. Go back to San Francisco, Kamala, which you destroyed which, by the way, you destroyed.
From the moment we take back the White House from Kamala Harris and Sleepy Joe, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We're going to put our country back together. It's going to go fast. Starting on day one, I will seal the border and stop the invasion of migrants into our country, very dangerous migrants. We will carry out the largest deportation operation of criminals in American history. We have no choice. We will end inflation and make America affordable again. We're going to get the prices down. We have to get them down. It's too much. Groceries, cars, how everything. We're going to get the prices down. While working Americans catch up, we are going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest rates at 10 percent. People are being made to pay 25 percent. Temporary ban. We will become energy independent. You know, we were energy independent four years ago. We will become, again, first time ever, we were energy independent. We were going to become energy dominant, but now we will be. We will be energy dominant like no other country has ever been before. Much bigger than Saudi Arabia, much bigger than Russia. You know, we were in third and even fourth place when I took over. When I left, we were in first place ahead of them by a lot. And then bad things started to happen. We will open Anwar again. I got it done. Ronald Reagan couldn't get it done. Nobody could get it done. I got it. It's probably the largest site in the world. Could be bigger than Saudi Arabia. And we will tap the liquid gold that's right under our feet. And we will drill, baby, drill. Drill. We will stop outsourcing and turn the United States into a manufacturing superpower, which we were in the process of doing, and it won't even be hard. Here is the deal that I will be offering to every major company and manufacturer on Earth. We will cut your taxes from 21 percent down to 15 percent and give you every possible advantage, but only if you make your product here in America and hire American workers for the job. And if you're a foreign country and you don't make your product here, then you will have to pay a tariff, a fairly substantial one, which will go into our Treasury, will reduce taxes. But if you send your product into the United States, that will happen. On the other hand, if you want to build your factory in the United States, there will be no taxes, there will be no tariffs, there will be nothing to pay. So if you build your factory or your plant in the United States, there will be no tariff. And therefore, you, they will all be coming, and they'll be building, and you will be getting so many job offers, and a lot of it's going to take place right here in Pennsylvania. We will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act so that if China or any other country charges us a 100 or a 200 percent tariff, then we will charge them a reciprocal tariff or tax of 100 or 200 percent, and we will do it immediately. We were in the process of getting that done, and then bad things happened with the thing called an election. I will not let Mexico, which has taken a lot of your business now, or China, or any other country sell cars into the United States to the detriment of our auto workers, because with what they're doing with electric car mandates and everything else, we won't have any auto workers. The auto workers are going to vote overwhelmingly for me. They have a stupid person in charge of the union named Sean Fain. The Teamsters have a brilliant person, but the auto workers have a stupid. He's agreed and wants them to build all electric cars. If you do that, there will be no more auto jobs. They'll all be made in China and other places. And I will not allow U.S. Steel to be sold to Japan. We're going to fight that. Right? Right, Mike? And I will always protect Social Security and Medicare with no cuts, so we're not going to be raising ages. And for four years, I didn't. I will stop the drugs and fentanyl pouring in and killing our kids and killing our families. 
We will crush violent crime and protect all law enforcement, including Border Patrol, ICE sheriffs, and Secret Service. We will terminate the Green News scam and spend the trillions of unspent dollars on roads, bridges, real infrastructure, and paying down debt, not fake infrastructure that's caused massive inflation with no benefit at all. I will settle the war in Ukraine, and I will end the chaos in the Middle East, and I will prevent World War III. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. I got a good, lively group back there, right? They're great. They're great. No, they, they love our country. They love our country. But we will have, again, peace through strength. We had no wars. For four years, we had no wars other than ISIS, which I inherited. And we ended ISIS in four weeks. That was the end of ISIS. We ended it 100% of the ISIS caliphate. We have a great military, but not the guys that you see on television that have no clue what's going on. But we have the real military is great. And they showed me that. They really showed me that. It was supposed to take five years. We did it in four weeks. There's a man. Thank you very much. Look at that guy. Thank you very much. That, one more. Thank you very much. And I will support universal school choice. And I believe the Lifeline scholarship bill would be a great start for those students trapped in the worst performing schools in Pennsylvania. A lot of people want to see that happen. I understand it. Right? You know that? Oh, you do know that. Good. It would provide financial assistance to empower parents to take their children out of a failing school and send them to a public, private, religious, or charter school. That's really right for them. It's very, you know, school choice is a very big deal. A lot of people don't know that, but it's a big deal. It'll be great. You know, I'm going to take the Department of Education, close it in Washington, let the states run their own education. Very important. Because we spend more money per pupil than any other nation in the world by far. And yet, we're ranked at the bottom of every list. So, you know the expression, what the hell do you have to lose, right? I did that with our great, because they've been so supportive. I've gone up like a rocket ship. Our great, but they're being hurt very badly by the people pouring into our country. Our African-American population, I said, well, you're last on crime. You're being devastated with inflation more than anybody else. You have the smallest percentage of home ownership. And I went through a list of 12 things. This was a long time ago, 2015, when I was running, even before. And I was with a group, and I wasn't doing particularly well with them. And I, I'm going through this whole list of things. I mean, you're last in ownership. You're last in cash and having money in the bank. Last in all these different categories. And I said, Vote for me. What the hell do you have to lose? Remember that? What the hell do you have to lose? And my people didn't like it. They said backstage, oh, sir, that was not nice. I said, it is nice. Anyway, I didn't know. I figured maybe I shouldn't have said it. The following day, I went up 12 points, right? 12 points. And today, we're the highest we've ever been with the African-American population. We did things that were really incredible for them and with them criminal justice reform right took care of the historically black colleges and universities i got them long-term financing they were great we did a lot and uh, we we're doing great with the black population hispanic population is like a rocket ship for us but we have to protect it because the people coming through kamala they're coming through the border, and they're taking your jobs. Your job numbers are going way up in terms of your, your unemployment. Way up. I don't know if anybody's seen black unemployment in the last few months. These people are taking, they're coming in illegally, and they're taking your jobs. Hispanic also. And next will be unions. They're going to have a big effect on the unions. So you guys better get together and vote for Trump. I'll tell you, it's going to be a 
It's going to be a mess. We will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C., making them safe and clean and beautiful again because our cities are in trouble and our capital is, a, is like a murdering pit. We're going to get that cleaned up and we're going to make it safe and beautiful and people are going to be proud to go back to our capital without being killed. And we will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency because right now, David, is under siege. And you know we can't lose that. Losing that would be like losing a war. And then we would, in fact, be a third world country. We lose the reserve. But this is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe. It was just misery. What a miserable few years. I mean, it's just been horrible. And people all over the world, especially the leaders, are laughing at how stupidly our country is run. Remember, we're the party of common sense. And 95% of it is we're conservative and all that, but rather you're conservative, liberal, with a party of common sense, so important. But we're going to unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. Together, we will deliver low taxes, low regulation, low energy costs, low interest rates, low inflation so that everyone can afford things like groceries, a car, and a home and have money left over. We will stop the invasion, end migrant crime, strengthen our military, build a missile defense shield over our country, keep critical race theory and transgender insanity out of our schools. And we will keep men out of women's sports. Keep them out. We will defend the Second Amendment, protect religious liberty, restore free speech, and we will secure our elections once and for all. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope. But for that to happen, we must defeat Lion Kamala Harris, and we must stop her country-destroying liberal agenda. She is a radical left communist, and we cannot have her be the president of our country. We never want that ideology anywhere around, because it doesn't work, and it's been proven a hundred times. Remember, early voting is beginning right now. Get going right now. So you must get out and vote. We want a landslide that's too big to rig. We're going to have too big to rig. And on November 5th, we will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will always put America first. And we will take back our country that we love so much. Together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again, healthy again, strong again, proud again, safe again, free again. And we will make America great again. Thank you.